All right, so we have IGN Stellar Blade review. Uh, the other day we checked out GameSpot's IGN review. Let's get to the video. Let's see. Let's see which one we agree with more. I think GameSpot gave in his own words, gave it an Stellar eight. Blade director Hyung Tae Kim is a visualist, not a storyteller. Meaning, whatever Stellar Blade lacks in its story, he's tried to make up for in its gameplay. It was a refreshingly transparent statement, and after playing through Stellar Blade. It's also one that I find mostly accurate. Okay. This is a gorgeous action game with excellent character and monster design and exciting you guys know, that continues to evolve. Stellar Blade comes out tomorrow. It across the 30-hour adventure. Its story, light RPG elements, and the actual substance of its characters, on the other hand, fall well short of the high marks set by its combat. Okay. Stellar Blade certainly isn't pristine, and in some spots, it's positively dull. But oh. it's sharp in the areas that matter the most. I definitely never heard that before. Positively dull. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what IGN gives it. And now I'm gonna give you guys my final score of the game before like you know at, at the end of the Stellar video. Make sure you guys stay, stick around. Familiar one. The Earth is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, and humans have fled to a colony in space. Yes. You play as Eve, a member of the seventh airborne Eve, squad baby. sent to the surface to eliminate the threat of the Nativa. Horrific monsters that laid claim to Earth once the humans fled. What follows is a predictable tale that sees Eve linking up with the last remnants of human civilization and collecting four hypercores guarded by four big bosses, each of which comes with new revelations that answer the questions of what happened to the Earth, why the humans fled to space, yep. what created the Natibas, okay. and so on. And That's so basically like the whole story. None okay. Of the reveals were particularly surprising, and while the back half of the story is a little bit more interesting once all the cards are laid out on the table, okay. any emotional moments fell flat for me because of a near complete lack of character building in the front half. Okay, and I agree with really that. Okay. The biggest issue with the I agree with that story. Its characters lack any kind of personality, charm, charisma, or anything that could have endeared me towards them in any sort of way. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. After 30 <laughs> hours, I can barely tell you anything noteworthy about Eve outside of the fact that she's fiercely dedicated to her mission. She's very close with her fellow I think that's her character, though, right? Jackie, and she doesn't like getting wet. I'd like to avoid getting wet. We're never really given any sort of insight as to who she is as a character. She's got no sense of humor, and her interactions with her companions Adam and Lily are incredibly shallow. Those two don't fare much better either. Despite the fact huh. that they act like they share a strong bond, it never feels believable because you never really see that bond being formed. Okay. Without okay. any of that, it was hard okay. to become invested in Eve, her mission, or Stellar Blade's world in general. I understand that. I understand that. The shape, uh, edge of the sword, okay. Um, uh, bro, I almost said sword. I don't know Thankfully, why. Thankfully, the most important part of an action game is the action itself. Yes. And Stellar Blade checks pretty much all the boxes when it comes to its combat. Man, it's man, animated, does it. Challenging, satisfying, has a healthy amount of enemy variety, and while there's a lot of depth, it never became Ooh! overwhelming in what it demanded of me. What boss was that? that? Stalker. Stellar combat is derivative, but at the very least, it's derived from one of the best in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Bro, like Sekiro, these bosses are crazy. Defense -driven. Enemies are prone to launching into long, uninterruptible combos, and the only way to properly deal with them is to precisely press the block button just before their attacks land. Yeah, timing is everything. Each okay. One after the other. Okay. Every parry you land takes away a point from the enemy's balance, and once their balance is broken, you're able to land a hugely damaging blow that will kill most standard enemies outright and deal massive damage to bosses. Unparryable attacks are clearly telegraphed with flashes of color. A yellow flash means an attack is straight up unblockable and needs to be dodged. Oh, I didn't even know that. Flash signals an attack that you can blink past by holding forward and dodging through the opponent to their backside. And then a purple flash is the sign of an attack that can be repulsed, which forces you to hold back and press the dodge button at just the right time to deflect and expose the enemy's weak point. Oh, really? Once I didn't again, even know that. This is very similar to Sekiro style of telegraphing unblockable moves that either must be jumped over, be curie countered, or avoided. So yellow is unblockable. Just as well here. Okay. Developer Shift Up smartly didn't settle for just straight up copying Sekiro's combat either. It adds its own twists in the form of beta skills, which are a series of four special attacks that Eve can use for specific uh -oh, she purposes, move, move, move. including a wide sweeping attack that hits multiple enemies, a triple stab attack that does massive singular damage, a shockwave type move that hits enemies at a distance, and a shield breaker that deals extra damage to an enemy's armor. These attacks can be used by spending beta energy, which is gained by landing hits and parrying strikes. So you're well incentivized to engage with the enemy as opposed to just bro, running this away and gigas, bro. Bro, Gigas looks like a menace. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't wait to check out this boss fight.
Speaking of those enemies, one of the areas what? in which Stellar Blade particularly excels in is its enemy variety and design. There are more than yeah. 48 different types of Natiba to fight against, and while some of them are only slight variations of each 48. other different weapons, at least those different weapons have their own combos and techniques that you need to learn in order to properly deal with them. Boss fights are great too, with intense battles against huge and aggressive well, monsters we, we've known that this. always had me on the edge of my seat. We've, uh, we've felt literally known this. throughout the 30 hours it took me to beat it. Partially because of the aforementioned enemy variety, but also because at just about every major chapter in the campaign, I would get a new tool or mechanic oh, move, that changed up how I approach certain encounters. There's a wrist-mounted drone that could fire a bunch of different ammo types from a distance, along with new mechanics like burst skills that added yet another layer of resource management and became critical for tough fights. Ooh, bro, that is, bro, that is hard, bro. Burst skills are similar to beta skills in that they are special attacks that require energy to use, but they are more powerful and typically result in an enemy being slumped on the ground. Slumped? that add strength, Burst energy is much harder to build, requiring you to either perfectly dodge enemy attacks, successfully use a blink or repulse, or by spending a point of your beta energy to use a beta chain, which essentially exchanges the two resources. It was fun to make on-the-fly decisions about whether to spend oh two God. points of beta energy on a less powerful beta skill, or spend a single point to gain a point of burst energy and then use a much stronger attack later. Bro, that move is hard. Considerations like these that, that move really is too hard. some of the tougher bosses in Stellar Blade sing. Not to mention the fact that the burst skills themselves just look cool as all hell. Bro, it does, bro. Oh my, bro, bro, that is the cherry on top of That's all hard, this excellent bro. action is the exceptional soundtrack, which features everything from blood pumping bangers during boss battles. Bro, I, I know y'all gonna be down bad melodies, for these outfits, bro. This desolate world. <laughs> Bro, I know y'all gonna be down bad over these outfits, and I can already tell. Already. Hidden beauty. Uh-oh. When you're not hacking away at Stellar Blade's horrific-looking Natima monstrosities, you'll be doing some light RPG activities, like exploring Zion, Mankind's Last Bastion of Civilization, restocking at shops, changing your hair, picking up quick and light requests from a bulletin board, or taking on meteor side quests from NPCs. True to everything else in Stellar Blade, none of these tasks were particularly interesting from a storytelling perspective, save for one involving a man and his love for a broken down singing android. What? Is that so? They do occasionally culminate in a big round two fight against a stronger version of a boss. I round two? Thought, but outside those few moments, I quickly found myself tired of the side quest grind. First off, many of these side quests have you returning to old levels in order to reach a specific spot to either pick up some sort of notes. Side quests are cool, but like I'm not really quest. like a big well, sweat when it comes to side like side quests and stuff. Zones, you know? Where there's a map and numerous fast travel points to make travel much less of a chore, it is an absolute pain when it comes to the linear levels where you have nothing to guide you but a blip on your compass. Okay, Most of the time, I understand that. Nothing has changed in these levels either, so it's literally just retracing your steps through the same level. Dang, so you gotta like run a marathon. You might have encountered on your first time. Through, That's what the guy at GameSpot said. A single item that you weren't able to pick up before. What makes this worse is that very rarely did I ever feel the effort was worth the trip. Most of the time, the rewards are just gold and EXP. EXP is great, as level ups give you skill points to explore more of Stellar Blade's well-developed skill trees. But later on, which was when the side quest fatigue started to settle in, skill points were less exciting because the remaining upgrades were either skills I had passed on because I didn't really feel like I needed them, or they felt like very incremental stat increases on moves I didn't use very often, or were just extremely situational upgrades. Then there's gold, which for the most part is a useless currency in the latter half of the campaign. It's used pretty much exclusively for refilling consumables or getting more crafting components, okay. which I practically never had to do because you find so many of all of those things just by opening treasure chests and breaking boxes. Thankfully, exploration fares much better. The two open zones of Stellar Blade aren't enormous, but they are densely packed with hidden collectibles. I, I think I know what I'm going to get. I think I know what I'm going to get it. Explore as much as possible. I usually give it like a pre-rating before I play it. I think I know what I'm going to get it. That can be returned to your base like like the score. Rewards. I thought, bro, I thought she was. Max and I thought she was blocking something, bro. I wasn't paying attention, bro. Of goodies, exoskeletons that greatly affect your stats and can affect your approach Bro, I know y'all about to be down bad, bro. 30 or so outfits that you can use to change Eve's appearance. There is an impressive variety among those costumes. Impressive, So huh? for every skimpy swimsuit or super tiny mini skirt, there's also a classy dress or stylish outfit that makes okay. Eve look like, as my wife puts it, an insta baddie. 
I always look forward to finding a new skin. And truthfully, it's very satisfying to have another big action game outside of Insomniac's Spider-Man series that features really high quality unlockable cosmetics that you don't have to purchase with real money microtransactions. One other feather in Stellar Blade's cap is that it mixes up its gameplay fairly well. I, that's Kings what I said. You go deep underground into a creepy lab where your scanner and sword don't work, turning it into a genuinely spooky survival horror style game. There are also some cool uncharted like action sequences Ooh, as well as a good mix of linear and non-linear level design. Not all of these breaks from combat hit and the platforming heavy sections are particularly oh, that's annoying hard. when they come up, but they nonetheless oh, do a hard. good job of relieving the monotony that would come from just going fight to fight with nothing in between. After beating Stellar Blade, it's also worth mentioning that there's no new game plus at launch. It will be coming down the line as free DLC, but right out of the gate, there's not much waiting for you at the end beyond a hard mode that doesn't really seem to change much outside of the enemies hitting you harder. Uh -oh. This is especially frustrating because once what you beat the game, your save file with all of your unlockables, costumes, and other collectibles is basically stuck at the final boss fight. You can't take those costumes over with you to a new game, forcing you to do an entirely fresh playthrough outside of one new costume that you get for beating the game, and you can't even skip cutscenes on your subsequent playthroughs. Hmm. Verdict. What are they? I think they're, he's going to give it. They're going to give it like an eight. Stellar Blade stands out as a gorgeous and well-crafted. What, what do you guys think they're going to give it? Impressive strengths and very clear weaknesses. I think IG might give it an eight. Story and characters lack substance, and some of its RPG elements are poorly implemented, like dull side quests that very often force you to retrace your steps through previous levels, with very little done to make the return trip feel unique or rewarding. What are they going to give action it? Action picks up most of that slack thanks to the rock-solid fundamentals of its Sekiro and Gameplay ten out of ten. System. A deep well of hideous monstrosities to sharpen your sword against. <laughs> hideous and monstrosities. Goodies that do a great job of incentivizing exploration all throughout. A seven? Really? For more Stellar Blade, check out the first minutes of the game. Along with They're giving it a seven. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold up. Well, this changes everything because I thought, I don't know why, but I easily thought that they were going to give this an eight. Or like an eight and up for sure. Because let's be honest with you. Gameplay wise, I don't even have to like, and I told you guys like months ago that gameplay wise, I don't even have to worry about this, bro. Gameplay wise is a 10 out of 10. I can already tell. Haven't even touched the game yet. It's already a 10 out of 10. With the bosses, uh, with the different type of combinations, etc. I'm thinking, okay, gameplay 10 out of 10. The only thing that we probably need to worry about, not even worry about, but the only thing that we probably need to like think about is probably like the story, which, you know, some people like story, like some people don't like the story. Some people just play a game just for the gameplay. Some people play a game for the story. So at the end of the day, yes, it is like a 50-50 or, you know, whatever percentage you guys want to come up with. You know, I mean, what? I, listen, what I say isn't really 1,000% true, but, you know, it's true in my eyes. But, like, honestly, though, so what I thought of, I thought they were gonna get, they were going to give it an 8 because of, number one, the gameplay. The gameplay looks absolutely fire. I don't even think I even heard him say anything bad about the gameplay besides, like, you know, um like you traveling like you know 20 like twenty thousand miles you know just for some gold or whatever i think that was like the only thing that he said that was you know that was bad about the game like about like the actual gameplay now GameSpot gave it a eight ign gave it a seven i thought uh ig was going to give it like a you know like an eight and up but they gave it a seven i did not think wow okay i mean a seven for ign is good which is okay um now for me Gameplay, I'm not really, I'm not really worrying about it at all. Gameplay is a ten out of ten, right? The story mode, one thing that I kind of agree with the guy is, I agree with this guy. I even like, I didn't even learn his name. I, w I was able to put his name down somewhere. Wait, hold up. I think, I think his name is at the beginning. Hold up. In his own. Okay, the one thing that Mitchell said um, about this, like whatever, referred to like story mode, whatever, that he was actually pretty right about. That I can already tell before I even touch the game is he said that there was like a he said there's like a disconnect like whenever it comes to like emotion and stuff like that whenever it comes to the story because of uh like like the background of Eve and like how I, I don't want to be disrespectful or on, on uh, uh how dry the voice acting is I, I didn't listen I I didn't mean to disrespect I'm just saying right I can kind of get what he like where he's coming from because if like from those like little like lines of like you know dialogue whatever. Like hearing how like Eve sound, Eve sound very like um like robotic in a way. Now listen, am I saying that she's robotic throughout the whole thing? Like we've even seen like the part to where 
you know, this is a spoiler, but if you play the, you know, if you play the demo, then you know what I'm talking about. We've even, we, we've even seen the parts where uh, her friend, what was it, Taki or Tachi? I think that was her name. Uh, where, like, you know, where she got, like, stabbed or whatever. And, like, you know, you see, ah, like, she was screaming and stuff like that. So, I guess she showed emotion then. But, like, I don't know. He said that in a dialogue, I mean, the guy plays the game. So, he knows, obviously, he knows more than me. But he said that um, that a lot of the dialogue was very um, short. It didn't really have a, a lot of emotion in it and stuff like that. Which, I mean, which out of the dialogue that he just showed us, he was right. But that don't really, you know, make up for, like, you know, the entire story. So, I guess we'll see. Uh, whenever it comes to whenever it comes to the entire story, if I'm being honest with you though, if I'm giving it my own score, right? Gameplay is ten out of ten. I don't even have to like. Come on, bro. Gameplay is ten out of ten. Story mode, obviously, the story mode is not good as like the gameplay. I, I, when I say story mode, I mean like the story. Okay, that's just my way of saying story, right? Um, because I, bro, I, re, bro, like we've reviewed a lot about Stellar Blade over the past few days. Um, if you, in the demo, they show, like, a little bit of, like, the, I guess you could say the backstory of, like, you know, Eve and, like, her people coming from, uh, like, a place, whatever, and they're coming to Earth, and they all land on Earth, and then, like, 98% of the people are dead besides Eve. That was probably, like, I wouldn't say that's the, like, that's the most emotional part, like, about the game. But, like, as, like, an intro, that was, like, a good intro, if I'm being honest. Um, because after, like, you know, after, like, everybody's pods gets dropped off or something. First of all, you got some pods running into, like, bro, some pods are running into into pods. Like, Ray Lewis running against, like, Pay Lewis, like, bro, bro, Payne Manning, something like that, bro. Like, some pods are, like, blowing up and stuff like that. So, like, that whole scenery, that whole, like, little cutscene, whatever, that was hard. Like, the, like the intro, like, the opening cutscene was nice. But if I'm being honest with you. The, the like the actual story mode with the cutscenes and stuff like that, I would probably give it like a so far what I've seen in the demo. So far, I'm gonna give it like a eight, yeah, an eight out of ten whenever it comes to the story mode. I might give it a seven out of ten. Which so we combine if we if we combine the 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 story mode rating with the gameplay rating, would that be like a eight out of ten or like a nine out of ten if we combine them both? If I said a ten out of ten for gameplay and like an eight out of ten for like story. And you combine them, would that be like a, I think that will even out at like a nine, right? So I think I'm going to give it a nine. I think I'm, I'm going to give this game a nine so far. The game comes out tomorrow. We got a lot of gameplay already. Listen, first of all, let me tell you how prepared we are. We got a lot of gameplay set for tomorrow. We got, um, we got, we got shorts and everything set. Don't, I told you, I, when this game comes out, we're covering this thing from head to toe. We already got gameplay. Uh, we already got like a lot of the bosses and stuff like that. Uh, we, we got a lot of videos set, you know, for tomorrow, you know, Saturday, Sunday, etc. So, hope you guys are ready for all these videos. Uh, comment down below. What do you guys think about Stellar Blade? If you guys played it already. Um, and, and, yeah, man, I'm excited to get you guys a pin on the game. So, you guys have a pin out. And...